Right, so if you're like me and you've switched from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve, you might wonder, how can I save my keyframes as presets? Because in Premiere Pro, you could do so. You could create keyframes in a clip, save them as a preset, and then import them in newer clips or newer timelines or newer projects. In DaVinci, you can't really do it that way. But in this video, I'm going to teach you how to get a similar result. But before we start, my name is Rico Richardson. I upload weekly videos on DaVinci and Darktable. So if that's something that you're into, please consider subscribing. Now, let me show you how to do that. And here we have the clip that I'm going to work with. So if I start the clip, this was in the middle of nowhere where we got stuck because the car broke down. So let's say I want to zoom in after a while. So this is a six second clip and I did that on purpose because I'm going to show you later on how to do it and I can't have a very long video file. So let's say after two seconds, I want to zoom in. So we need to open up the inspector tab and we see that we have the transform option over here and we can add keyframes by selecting these dots. So I'm going to select the keyframe because I want to start here and now I'm going forward eight frames. I'm just going to zoom in 1.2 and then let's say on the four second mark, I'm going to add another keyframe and I'm going forward eight frames again. And I'm just going to move this back to one and now we've created a zoom effect. So let me show you how that looks. So here it zooms in, here it zooms out and that looks great. But the problem with that is I can't really save those keyframes as presets. I can see them by selecting this button and this button for the curve. And I can select one of those and then go with ease in or one of this one and then ease in, ease out, ease in and out. And that has to do with the smoothness of how the curve will be adjusted within the clip. So how smooth the zoom will be. But I can't save this and it's annoying me very, very much. Now, don't worry, I'm going to teach you how to do this anyway. So let's undo everything by clicking this little symbol that will just reset everything. So please don't add a lot of keyframes and click this. You will have a very, very bad day, but we're going to add a adjustment layer. So for that, let's open up the effects library. And then within the effects, we have an adjustment clip and it's basically the same like the adjustment layer. So just drag it over your clip. Let's extend it throughout the entire clip. And let's go back to the two second mark because that's where I want to start. I'm going to select this adjustment clip. I'm going to select the keyframe, eight frames forward again, zoom in 1.2. On the four second mark, I'm going to create another keyframe. I'm going forward eight frames again. I'm going to make sure that this is back to one. And now let's play this clip and I'll show you how that looks. So we're zooming in right now. We're zooming out right now and it's the same effect. And if you want to save this, you can drag this to your power bin. And if it's being dragged to the power bin, it will show up here and you can use it in every clip that you like, but just, or in every project, but just keep in mind that it needs to be the same database. So if you have a local database on computer one and a local one on computer two, you won't see those adjustment clips. So you'll have to rebuild everything yourself unless you're using the same database. So I'm going to show you another way how to do this in which it doesn't require the same database. And that's in Fusion. So first let me delete this layer and I'm going to create this clip into a Fusion clip. I want this one deleted as well because we don't need it. Delete. I'm going to close down the effects library. So I'm going to change this into a Fusion clip by clicking my right mouse button, new Fusion clip. I'm not going to name this in any sort of way. And then we're going to Fusion. And in the Fusion tab, we see that we've got a media out and we've got a media in. And the media in, can be shown on the left side by clicking this button or on the right side by this button and the media out is on the right side and we know so because this is being highlighted. So now I need to transform this. So the easiest way to do this is to just select the media in and then click this symbol and boom, we have a transform node over here. We can do the same thing by just clicking out of this and then hitting select spacebar. And then if I drag this in, you will see the select tool menu. I'm going to search for transform. I'm going to add it, but uh oh, now it's not in between. So you can do so by pressing your shift and then dragging it in between and releasing your mouse button and your shift button. And now it's connected. So let's create the zoom effect. There's two ways to do this. There's an easy way and there's a more advanced way. And I'm going to teach you the advanced way in a minute. And that has to do with the fact that you'll have more options. So here's a transform node and we're just going to do the same thing. So this is a six second clip. So on frame, let's say 25, I want to start. So I'm going to select the keyframe for the size. I'm going forward eight frames. I'm going to turn this into 1.2. 
and I'll go to the 100 mark or the frame number 100. I'm going to create a keyframe again, forward eight frames and putting this back to one. And now we have a zoom effect and you can see these white spots, dots, lines, and those are the keyframes. So keep an eye on the right window. Let's play it. We're zooming in. Nothing is happening and we're zooming out. So that looks good and we can save this. But before we do, I'll show you the advanced way. So let me delete this transform node. I'm going to create a new one. So now let's add a new transform node. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to go to the start of this clip and we need to create a keyframe. And we need to do so because if we don't, we can't open this size menu and select insert and animated curves. And with the animated curves option, you see a modifier menu being added on top of here. So let's open that one up. And now we have all kinds of options to change. So we've got the curve shape, the scaling, the timing. And in this particular setting, I just want to focus on the input. So on frame zero, I want the input to be zero. And now it appears if, as if the clip is gone and that's the case, but don't worry, we'll get it back in a minute. And we're not going to the 25th frame, but we're going to frame 50. And that has to do with the fact that I'm shooting in 25 frames per second. And the effect that I'm going to apply right now will be done in twice the speed, which means 25 frames. So I'm going to bring back the input to one. And if we play this clip, you now see it's starting from zero to one. So that's one thing that I'm very happy about, but I want to change this animation. So let's change the curve from linear to easing. And if you put it on easing, you've got a ton of options to pick. So let's go with elastic, for instance, for the in one and the same thing for the out one. And let's click the mirror one. And the mirror one basically means that the same effect that you're applying over here will be applied to the end of this clip. Now, let me play this clip in full to show you how that looks. So now we're zooming in. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. And we're zooming out but i don't want it to zoom from zero to one so let's adjust the offset so i'm going to put the offset on one and now it's very zoomed in but once again watch what happens so i'm playing the clip we're zooming in and we're going to zoom out again but i don't like this effect in this clip so i'm going to change the elastic to back and this one as well back now let's play the clip again to see what happens there you go, we're zooming in and it's holding, it's holding, it's holding and now it will zoom out again. And that already looks a lot better, but I think the zooming is still a little bit off. So let's change the scaling as well. I'm going to put this on 0 0.5 and let's play it. Now we're zooming in, it's going to hold the clip and at the end it's going to zoom out again. Great. So now let's save this preset, which we can apply to other clips. And there's a very easy way to do this. All you have to do is select the right mouse button and go to macro and then create macro. And in the create macro, we can give this a name. So let's call this zoom tutorial. And there's a couple of things that I want to save. First is the output and the input, but we needed to add a keyframe here as well. So we're going to select size so that we can change that as well. Now let's close down the transform one and let's open up the animated curves. And in the animated curves, what I want to change is I want to change the input. I want to change the in and the out point. I want to change the curve as well. And I want to change the scale and the offset. And now what I need to do is I need to save this by going to file, save as. I'm going to save this on my desktop. And it will be saved as a dot settings file. Let's save it. Let's close it. And after we've saved it, we need to go to the effects library and we need to click edit templates. And we need to make sure that the settings file that we've made is here right now. So go to these three dots and show folder. And this is where we need to save it in the effects. So let's go to our desktop. Let's cut it from here. Let's paste it here and then drag it into the effects or open up the effects, but this is how I did it. Let's close it down and let's reboot DaVinci. And here's the clip that we've created the effect with. So I'm going to delete that just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to drag in the new clip and we need to make sure that this is a compound clip, otherwise it won't work. So new compound clip, enter. And this is where the fun part happens. If we open up the effects library and we go to effects, you see that it's now here, the zoom tutorial effect. So if we drag this onto the clip and we start to play it, 
you see that the zoom effect is being applied to this clip. And you can do this with everything. So all the keyframe effects that you create can be saved this way and then stored into the effects library and then be used in future uh, programs. And this is how you can save your presets in and this is how you can save your presets. It will be stored in the effects library. You can use it in new projects on new clips. It doesn't allow you, it doesn't require you to use the same database. All you need to make sure is that the dot setting file is in the effects folder from DaVinci Resolve. And that's it for this week. So I really hope this has helped you when you switch from Premiere Pro to DaVinci and keep wondering how to save those keyframes. So this is the only way to do it. I hope you like it. Let me know in the comment section down below. If you want to see more of me, please click that playlist over there. And if you haven't subscribed already, you can do so by clicking that button down there. And for this week, there's only one more thing left for me to say, which is make love to the like button. And until next time, doei!